Welcome to Joe's RC Corner. Welcome back. And we're, today we're getting back on the uh, Super Chipmunk. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to start fiberglassing the wing and the ailerons. So I'm going to go through the process of how I do it. I'm not saying it's the correct way. I'm not saying it's the right way. It's the way I've been doing it. And uh, I've had pretty good results with it. So if you're interested, stay tuned. All right, so first thing we're gonna start working on is we're gonna start uh, working on the ailerons first because I got some filler being uh, that's already been applied and it's starting to cure uh, and dry up on the wing first. Uh, once that's done, then we're gonna go ahead and do the finishing sanding on that to get ready to lay that fiberglass down with the water-based polyurethane. Uh, but to get started, I'm gonna show you what I was doing in regards to the uh, ailerons first. So as you can see, uh, I'm putting on the filler in some of these spots that are a little bit low on the uh, aileron wood uh, and what I'm using to complete that is this uh, DAP uh, filler fast and fill it's very lightweight uh, lightweight spackling it works great it is white but we're going to be painting this uh, surfaces anyway so it doesn't really make that much of a difference in what color it is um, so we got that filled in right there as you can see and uh, this area is all good. The rest of it's already been somewhat filled. So this aileron is pretty much ready. Just gonna let that dry a little bit. We're gonna look over this next one too here. So if we take a quick look here, right along here, we can look for any uh, imperfections, any low spots uh, that might need a little bit of filling. Look on the tips, make sure they're flush and flat. Any gaps in there, there's a little bit of a spot right here. It's a little low. And take a little bit on your finger here, just a little tiny bit. We're just gonna fill that area in right there. And uh, once this is fiberglassed and this stuff dries and sanded, won't even know that it was there. Nice and smooth there. There's a couple of air holes along here from where the uh, where the polyurethane glue expanded and left some air bubbles. We'll just fill those in really quick. There we go. Look for any other low spots or imperfections. It's a little bit right here. I'm just gonna roll it in since it's on an edge. Just roll it in like so. Very nice. Make sure that there's no gaps along there. And I sealed those with the CA already first. There we go. All right, and we'll let that dry right there while we get ready for the next step. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is the aileron. So now that they've dried a little bit and I've gotten the uh, some 800 grit sandpaper and just went ahead and you know, touched up these areas here to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and ready for the uh, for the fiberglass. First thing you're going to do is you're going to get clean off your surface, uh, your work surface first. So I got, I went ahead and I brushed off the whole surface, made sure the area is nice and clean, and then I'm going to take this aileron that's also nice and clean. We're going to make sure we have no extra dust on it. Make sure there's no messes that can be made. And I'm going to lay this on the fiberglass and I'm gonna do one side at a time. I always do the bottom first and then do the top and roll it over the bottom. Uh, same as if you were doing covering on, uh, with Monaco, okay? So I got this laid out and we're gonna leave a little bit extra on all sides just so we have a little bit of extra to play with. So about I don't know, about one inch or so. Okay. Make sure it's nice and straight. You don't want to start pulling this weave apart. And we're going to probably cut it about right here. Make sure your scissors are sharp. They... Fiberglass dulls these scissors very quickly. So if you have serrated ones, they'll last a little bit longer. Fortunately, I haven't gotten a 
the second pair. I lost my other pair. And we're just going to cut it nice and slow and just keep it the same distance all the way apart. Okay, there we go. So we got the first one ready. So we're going to start with that. I'll take this, move this off to the side, hold it up nicely, or just toss it to the side because we're going to need it again anyway. So Now, again, like I said, we're going to start with the bottom. Now, with this having the aileron uh, control horn already glued in place, it is going to make it slightly difficult. But what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where that spot is going to be. We're going to put a little bit of a slit there already. So that way we're ready to go around it nice and neat. So it's about right here. Okay. Now we're going to flip that, bring that right up over top like so. Hope you guys can see this in the camera view. Looks like you can. Have that go around. And this go around. Okay. Looks like it'll cover everything nicely on this whole top surface, which is great. Nice and smooth. And the goal is to get as many air bubbles you're, you want out of you can get out of it. Okay, so that looks perfect. That's going to cover it I cover it up nice. So I'm going to get a little plastic container here, and I'm going to grab my Verithane uh, Ultimate Polyurethane. This is the uh, satin finish. It doesn't really make a difference on which one you do. Uh, most of it's going to be sanded off anyway uh, in between coats, <clears throat> but that's what we're going to be using. Okay, and I'm going to use a smaller brush. It's only about a one inch, and I like to use the foam brushes. They work really good for this and it lets you push that right in there. So I'm going to try to rearrange this camera angle so you can see a little bit better on what I'm doing. Okay, so we're, let's get started here. Lay this out. This spot right here, we want to make sure that the that slit goes right up against it, the, uh, the piece, but it doesn't cause many other wrinkles. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get started right now. We got it ready. Lay this all out nice and flat. Okay, here we go. So get a little bit on your brush. Get this a little bit closer here. And then you just start working your way in. A little bit at a time. And work those bubbles out and away. Out and away, just like this. And this stuff will dry clear. And you, what's nice is that you don't have to work extremely fast. It does take a little bit of time for this stuff to dry, but you don't want to go too slow either. You need to keep a nice even pace. Just keep adding it on. And you got to put a couple of coats on this on just to uh, make sure that it seals it all really good. And what's nice is this stuff does not smell at all. There's no fumes involved in this. So you, your wife won't get upset. You can sand the edges just like you would with any other type of uh, resin that you're going to be putting on because it'll harden the same way. Very nicely, just like so. I'm going to start going around this edge here, this back side where the, that slit is. Okay. 
I'm going to start wrapping around the front leading edge first. Just like so. As you can see already, I'm getting a nice fiberglass surface there. And th this doesn't add a lot of strength to it. Really what this fiberglass is for is when you paint this aircraft, when you paint an aircraft with the fiberglass, it keeps it from cracking. Um, if you just paint straight onto the wood, weathering over time, that paint and the wood surface underneath is gonna dry out. And when wood dries out, it cracks and moves. And when that happens, your paint, your beautiful painted surface on that wood will also start to crack. So this keeps everything together, keeps the paint from cracking, and it leaves you with a beautiful finish that will last for years to come.
before I do this, the other side though, I'm gonna let give this a chance to to cure, to dry a little bit. Then I'll go back. I'll do the other side after I sand it a little bit. Okay, so I'll sand that a little bit, and then we'll uh, I'll go to the other side and uh, we'll do a little bit more. And then I'll do the back side of it once this dries. Uh, so we'll set that aside right here to let that uh, go off a little bit. Actually, I can put that over here on my heater for a little bit. That might dry it out a little quicker. That'll help dry that out. There we go. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll grab the other one now, the other aileron, and we'll get started on that one now. So I'm gonna continue on my way uh, with finishing up these and uh, off camera. And I will be back to start doing the work on the, uh, the wing. And we'll start with the bottom of the wing first and I'll show you how we do that. Uh, but essentially it's the same thing. We're gonna go up, we're gonna wrap around the edges, wrap around the corners, get the, uh, the aileron cutouts and everything. And uh, that's, that's pretty much all there is. So uh, stay tuned, I'll be right back when, we, uh, when I get ready to start on the wing. Hey, so I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to, to do this build for you. Uh, I'm really enjoying doing this and uh, hope you get learn a lot from it. So uh, basically, uh, did the, I did a time lapse here for the uh, to do the wing because it's just uh, more repetitive of the same thing, going from the ailerons to the wings and doing fiberglass in and more fiberglass in. But you kind of get the gist of what it is that we're doing here. Uh, basically just using the water, water-based polyurethane uh, to uh, glue the uh, fiberglass to the wing. Did one half, did some sanding on the other, and uh, then went ahead and did the next one. So that's pretty much all there is to it. And uh, hope you enjoy. And uh, make sure you uh, like, subscribe, and uh, go ahead and buy a t-shirt. Right there, I'm sporting the new... Uh, one of my new t-shirts so go ahead and uh, go to the Teespring store link will be in the description and go ahead and buy one because all the proceeds all the profits from that uh, go to help bring you more of this type of build and uh, I got a couple more aircraft coming along the way uh, I got a uh, Lanier uh, Stinger 40 that I'm going to be making electric that I uh, hope to to share with you all and uh, also a uh, 25 size uh, Cosmo, uh, which is a kit I've never heard of before, but I uh, went ahead and got it on eBay. It looks to be a really fun airplane. So go ahead, like, subscribe, and uh, visit my Teespring store and buy a t-shirt. Thanks again. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.